Thank you. Okay, today, ladies and gentlemen, first one correction. Unfortunately, I'm not a doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Not yet. Maybe someday later. So my name is uh, Jari Valtari. I'm from ABB, Finland. And uh, in the following presentation, I'll describe a bit about engineering of secondary system and then centralized protection and control. First, some background information, some new points to the to substation updates and engineering collected from interviews from Finnish utilities. Then, uh, some points how the new edition of 6150-6 is the stacking piece update and engineering challenges, then how centralized protection and control is addressing these same challenges, and a small example case and a point of functionality to both. Conclusion and final remarks. So background. The smart grid height or the smart grid activities at the moment, they, they seem to bring, up, bring a lot of new challenges to primary distribution substations. There are a lot of new inpatient features that we see that will come to the distribution network and to substation automation. Uh, adaptive protection, automatic fault identification, power restoration, loss waste protection. One good example was the previous presentation about smart grid, uh, about microgrid management. There are a lot of new intelligent features we need to install in substations in short future. And the trick is how to do it in a future-proof way. And uh, as we don't know at the moment, or the full extent of these new features, it's, uh, it can be anticipated that the uh, upgrade pace will be increased in the future. There will be more frequent upgrades to the functionality of substations, which brings uh, quite a good, well, a lot of difficulties for the life cycle costing, it's very important. Also, the engineering testing processes are in stress. And a uh, very important thing is to focus on standardization. It's 150, <coughs> so that we really have a good, good harmonized view to the substations in order to allow smooth updates in the future. Uh, when discussing with Finnish utilities, a common answer is that the ID updates are often delayed to the latest possible moment because of complex processes. Biggest concerns are verification and testing. If we would like to add one new feature, it often brings a lot of extensive testing for all functions or at least this part of the functionality. The engineering process are quite difficult. There are really no good generic system level tools available yet. <coughs> also, the documentation is tricky. For example, Google's signal mapping, how to really document and uh, maintain the list of Google's mapping properly. That is. That is not yet achieved, which we've heard some discussion about also during this Packworld conference. But uh, this update would often be beneficial. So only about 1% of the total asset value of distribution network, which is in protective relaying. And it has a big impact on the reliability, and from that point of view, also the profit that can be acquired from the network. The regulation rules in many countries also in Finland, are really putting a lot of emphasis on power quality. And uh, updates which would provide, for example, faster fault location, more selective operation, less unwanted tripping, that could actually pay itself quite, quite soon. So uh, investing on relaying is it's a good possibility to get a lot of profit with quite small investments, but it's often not done because of complex decision problems. The new edition of 6150-6 is uh, trying to attack these, these challenges by clarifying the engineering process in more detail. There are now more clear roles though, for different engineering tools, ID configurator and the system configurator. And then also new SCL file type, IID, instantiated IED description, which is uh, really IED specific, it doesn't have tools engineering or any other system level aspects. So it's, it's a good way to update a single IED without affecting system level configuration. So what, it, what these changes imply? Of course, more interoperability is needed. 
it's uh, not enough if uh, IDs from different vendors can discuss or communicate with each other via Goose if they don't really understand the functionality of the other IED. It's also been mentioned in, in, in the presentations earlier. We really need to understand the functionality. And also engineering processes, they need to be harmonized, more common, so that this uh, constant update can be really done efficiently. Another thing that it implies is that vendor-specific solutions in the system level should, should be avoided as well as possible. If there's some new application that advanced functionality which would require some certain logical nodes, some certain functionality in each and every IED substation, it doesn't really support this uh, modular, modular, modular view substations. It would require more system level engineering and a lot of testing. It's better to try to encapsulate it within one device, one logical device, where you can update, maintain it with, for example, these IID files without needing to change the or to review the system level configuration. Then how to do it in practice? There are at least three main views how to organize the architecture for the secondary system. The most traditional way is the number one, decentralized. We have a lot of IEDs in the Bay level, high-end high relays with a lot of multifunctional, a lot of functionality, which can be then configured to communicate with each other. Then another view, which is also promoted by some vendors and also research papers, is to have everything centralized. You only have merging units in Bay level, and all the processing is done in one single place in the central unit. But then there's a third possibility, what we believe is the, is the best. It's having a kind of a combined or a hybrid version where you do have Bay level functionality, but with reduced functionality, more a low end type of solution where you have basic primary protection and Bay level, but in addition, making in functionality, delivering the data, say station level, and also having centralized protection and control. And the third, Possibility we also piloted with a, with a Finnish utility presented two years ago in the Cyrus conference, where we have available protection relays handling the primary protection, but also sending the measurements onwards with 9 to the station computer where we can have more functionality. Not replacing the Bay level functionality, but completing it. So, what do we achieve with this kind of setup? <coughs> But one main thing is that the primary functionality on Bay level is separated from so-called advanced station level functionality, which allows us to do updates on the station level without really affecting the main protection running on the Bay level. It also has inbuilt backup protection where the Bay level protection and the station level functionality can, can back up each other and add reliability to that. There is also it enables us to move part of the tools engineering to station level internal logic within an IID file. It enables us to have a clearer and more simple station level configuration where applications requiring data from several places can be just connected to the station computer from merging units and then scripting commands can be sent backwards to go back to IEDs. And it also <coughs> enables us to reduce the complexity of Bay level IEDs, have less different variants of the IEDs in Bay level, have more simple but more reliable protection. And, uh, these benefits I could present or show in a small example case with the high impedance earth ball protection. In these, there are no boxes which are in, in below represent the Bay level functionality and up level functionality. They are not just two functions, if pet or corresponds to so-called advanced functionality, high press earth ball, and then the PTOC corresponds to basic primary functionality, no more over current protection. They are just example functions, of course, and many others. And in this example, everything is in the Bay level on a high end IED. And, uh, that creates a challenge when we want to update it, or maybe we want to add high impedance earth protection to a substation which doesn't have it yet. 
In order to do it, we would need to update all the IEDs and those loose communication between them for if the algorithm, for example, wants to transmit the intermediate calculation of results between different IEDs. We really need to have good system level up, uh, system configuration update also for enabling the functionality. And very often vendor utilities do not want to do it because they see too much work and too little benefit. Then another option is to have everything centralized. We have the advanced functionality and also primary functionality in the central unit. But that creates single point of failure, the station computer. Everything is in one place and in order to make sure you need to have redundant people also on station level. And this also, <coughs> when you also have the primary protection in the same place as the advanced protection, adding new functionality is also troublesome because you cannot do it without uh, interruptions to the electricity. There is no, there's nothing making sure that the, uh, the network stays reliable while doing updates. And then the third possibility. We have a low-cost, cheaper ID which would have the primary protection running all the time and the advanced functionality is added to the station computer. Having it this way allows us to update the station computer without affecting the primary protection. And uh, one thing I want to point out is also that the primary protection here, if instead of having the station on the station level, if we have it on the bay level, it's one step closer to the process and also one, one more step more reliable if we compare it to that case where everything is in the station computer. No, for the summary. So the functionality, functionality life cycle, it seems to get shorter. There are a lot of new features, a lot of new requirements which we need to address. And we really need to focus on upgradability of the environment. There was a good presentation yesterday about, the, about engineering tools, how we need to have more intelligence in the engineering tools so that we can automate the part of the engineering. But it's not enough. You also need to consider the really architecture of the secondary system. How to do it in a way that the tools have an easier task for updates. If you need to think of all aspects of the system, not only the tools. And uh, another final uh, con concluding remark is that the second edition of 6150-6 and the centralized protection and control setup, they both support a more modular view of the substation where you can encapsulate new functionality better. You can update it, for example, using new IID files without touching the system level configuration, which gives more future-proof aspect to your system and it allows more reliable updates and cheaper updates. Okay, this concludes my presentation. I want to thank you all for...